I'm here with Adam Rose, who is the writer of what I will already guess uh, at the end of 2024, I will say one of the best comics of 2024. Wow. I, I, you know, well, I shouldn't say, I, before you get super excited, I go like, of I read of what I read because I can't read everything, you know. But I say, let's just say, already I can tell this is going to be one of my favorites. Huge detective, and I know there's been some, there's been critical acclaim ahead of time, uh, as well. But uh, I, I like to discover these things for myself, and it's it's an incredible book. So first of all, welcome Adam. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Well, thank you. That that opening just uh, you made my day, my week, my month. I mean, <laughs> I appreciate it, and, I, and I'm, I'm I'm glad you're digging it, and it's, I'm happy to be here and talk comics and huge detective. Okay, excellent. So let's let's dive into it. The, the premise is interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have this prologue in, in black and white. So the let me see if I, I get it right. The huges. Um, that's what they got. 40 years ago in an alternate Earth, a race of giants suddenly comes back to the surface of Earth. Yep. Okay. So first of all, what gives you that idea to, to, to do that? Well, okay. So, I mean, uh, I feel like it's a combination of things. I am... And I, you know, this is in like Titans uh, promos and whatever. I am a Roll Doll fan, BFG. I've read that with my kids. I've read it on my own. And I'm also um, a huge Tolkien fan, like Lord of the Rings. And I just so I don't know the the idea of giants and the presence of them, and them being, you know, maybe even like the way they move, the way they their time works with them is different. So the concept of them simply. Uh, maybe hibernating for a extended period of time, maybe even before the dinosaurs or during, who knows? Uh, that's kind of where that came from. I was like, well, why couldn't they suddenly have been woken up by us, by humans? Or as they would refer to us in their slang, uh, dolls or beings. So that's where it started. And you've really worked out an interesting, before we get to the fact that this is essentially a murder mystery, you've worked out an, you know, you've built out an interesting world. So they, all of Australia has been abandoned by the dolls, right? Uh, so that the huge can live there. I've never been to Australia, but I'll assume that is true. That it is big enough for for their nation. That what and I did give that a lot of thought. And obviously population, uh, is something that I even I thought about all this stuff. So I mean, there it's certainly there are not millions of huge, but I'm not going to uh, give you a number. And I did, you know, also if you notice, there are, you know, just like in any person who has a home, they're not all going to leave willingly. So there are still Australians burrowed deep into um, their home and not leaving and not acknowledging it as Brodenbach, which. Uh, as my uh, Gulliver's Travel uh, nod. And, you know, I, I will say this too, that um, when the slang, again, another slang term used for this, like, you know, you, they, or the reference to them as being Aussies that had to leave, I do acknowledge and understand Australians. And a few people have even told me this, and I don't want them. I, this was like, like a perspective, not from an Australian. I understand that they don't call themselves that. But it's like more of like like the Western news or something, kind of making these 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 uh, comments. So yeah, the Australians are mostly all gone, and now there are like little Australias, the way we have like um, Chinatowns or little Italy's uh, here and there for their communities to stay connected. And you know, there's there's we had no choice. The huge and the humans knew we had mutual assured self-destruction because yes they are gigantic they're the size of skyscrapers but they acknowledged and realized that our uh nuclear weapons could destroy the planet they need to live on it's an interesting take because in so many ways they seem so peaceful and yet it, it still has to be a sense of detente uh, so you're making a comment on human nature and obviously they, you have a detective among the huge and and a weird i this is what i love is in issue in just one issue i'm i've got so many questions about everybody culturally 
Like there are trading cards. And uh, now that you've mentioned the Tolkien thing, and I always think, I don't know why this one always stuck with me, but uh, from the Chronicles of, of uh, Thomas Covenant, the unbeliever, salt heart foam follower, the, the, the seafaring giants. And, and that's kind of how your naming convention has gone. And, uh, you know, kids are, fa are fans. This does open with someone who is suffering from psychosis that they think they are a huge, but they are a human. And the lengths you've gone to, to to support that psychosis in a way is is fascinating. And I appreciate you saying that because, I mean, I did. I, I put a lot of thought into this, and I want to be respectful of anybody that's dealing with any kind of uh, psychological differences, challenges, if you will. Um, I don't go out and spell out exactly what's going on with Manny. And there's, there are multiple reasons for that, for the storytelling. Like there's, there are things that are going to be relieved, uh, revealed uh, in the upcoming issues about Manny, about Detective Giant, and uh, a character um, that you'll be seeing a lot more of soon in issue two. So it's, yeah, the, the, the building of the characters, the building of the world, it all connects as far as the, the wounds that are felt by um, what happened in the Omega event 30, 40 years ago. And even to people that are younger that maybe weren't um, like adults at the time or what happened to their parents or their parents' parents. So it's there's a reconciliation that's still a major struggle. And I, and I even thought a lot about how much time should have elapsed. And that's I just fell on this for a, a lot of different reasons. Um, and yeah, Manny, he's younger, but there's a lot going on that's going to be revealed about him. And yeah, he is struggling with something. And he says... So he's the only witness or suspect, we don't know, and he is saying he will only talk to a huge. So this is our first huge on human soil since the Omega event, since the truce. Yeah, and, uh, you know, what you triggered for me right there is, you know, it's essentially two generations. And as we face, like our major event here, you know, 9-11, a whole generation now has come and gone. And for we're not gone. We're hey, we're all still here. But <laughs> but that there are uh, you've got people like Manny who don't remember a world without them, without the huges, right? That's right, exactly. And that's why um, you'll see his affection and how some people like Detective Tamaki. You'll see why they are deeply um, troubled. But they're also understanding they need to have this cooperation to solve these horrific crimes. Yeah. Now, when you're writing this and, and working with your artist uh, Magenta, I I can't remember if there's a second if there's a Magenta surname. King. Okay. Uh, so I apologize. I did not get to go back into my into my copy to to reread. Uh, so so many times people you know deal with like closest thing I can think of is, you know, like Kaiju and so forth is, is getting that perspective correctly. If you have it all like worked out that they are exactly this tall, this huge, this is how they would be up against this thing, this thing, and this thing, because I've seen way too many movies in particular where it seems like, wait, wasn't he smaller than that? Or wasn't he t bigger than that? And you, you've got a remarkable consistency. A no, frightening no, it, consistency. It, it, again, Magenta is a genius of an artist, and he is my partner on this. And we have talked extensively about even down to like what Detective Giant wears. If you look closely, you will see it isn't, you know, because someone could question, well, how could he have a tailor? Well, if you look closely, and we talked even sp the specifics of what he is wearing, it, we, we imagine like, getting like old used sails of boats perhaps that were stitched together or other like a gigantic kind of manufacture factory level uh, fabrics for him to patch together this form. Um, and yes, the scale is something, you know, that's, I love comic books so much. I mean, I've been reading them since I was 10 and I just, the, this is such the perfect form to play with and push a panel to really show you perspective and point of view. And we talk about it all the time and how like for one panel, it might seem cramped and trapped for a detective giant, but then you pull out and you see Tamaki or some other human, you're like, oh my gosh, 
that's a very spacious area for one of us. So it's always like kind of that tug and pull that um, only I think you can find and have so much fun with in a comic. And do you think in your in your world building, did uh, did the huges have detectives or are they taking uh, from our culture, understanding who we are and creating societal roles similar? You are you're reading my mind because that what you just said is something I thought about there too, and it, that's how I, I'm playing this without giving away too much because they're uh, not only in the act in the main comic there are case files um, that Titan was generous enough to let me have in there like little kind of like a short story but you know there are case files for Detective Giant and perhaps other characters at the end of each issue where yes it is kind of uh, inferred that maybe they are, the huge are appropriating or taking from our culture. And the way I looked at that was as an olive branch. Like maybe we're not all together uh, physically, um, but maybe these are little ways to show patching things up, um, as well as the fact that you may have uh, noticed or not, like, you know, we had a, this fun with this one panel or a couple panels where, you know, the huge are permitted to be, um transportation uh, on the oceans for humans yes i found that fascinating and was trying to figure out again like well how does that work you know it's kind of like uh and it and yet there is this interesting sense of in a way the huge are perfectly alien and you you know that this is uh that this is a veneer they put on I, i'm fascinated by the detail and it's not a spoiler that they speak to each other telepathically. And so that's kind of interesting because I would also imagine his voice has to be like this boom or really trying to be small. You know, I, I just think it's so well thought out. Uh, no, I, I, and I appreciate you bringing up the voice because I thought a lot about that uh, as far as, yes, to, 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 with each other, it is telepathic. And it hurts uh, uh, for him to have to speak out loud. Like, so the effort it takes to speak to a human out loud, like the way we are talking right now, is the biggest compliment to them because it is creating pain for a huge to do it. For them to talk to us hurts. Um, and not to mention, and there are um, still huge that remember the Omega event, and they did not, they were not adverse to a human snack, like a bag of potato chips or peanuts. Oh, oh, that's clear. I mean, you've got a, a scene with a with a human zoo that I was like horrified, and yet, yes, I could see people doing that. I, you know, I, I I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, I just uh, assume that you've got a few arcs worked out because you've thought out this world too well, uh, you know, to just be six issues and done. And, and five issues, I, five issues, and I don't want to know everything about them in five issues. I want to keep going. So. I'm going to circle back to one question. You, you know, you said you you've been reading comics since you were ten years old. So, what was the comic that did it for you? That made you the lifelong fan? Um, wow, well, you know, it's now I'm kind of tired of uh, all these like multiverse, whatever you know, kind of mishmashes. But as a kid, uh, the Secret Wars, the, the first one with the Beyonder, uh, it blew my mind. I just, it just never occurred to me. Uh, to have that many characters interacting. It just it felt like we were like Marvel and DC up until that point, and I guess obviously uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know, there were certain rules. Like you didn't, you just didn't have X amount of characters interacting with each other. So between Secret Wars and that, for me, it was my first encounter with a DC Marvel crossover event, uh, the Titans and X Men. Um, Yes, I just found my copy like a month ago, and I was so excited that I found it because that was that incredible. my mind. So those two, as far as early, early mind blowers, and then as I got a little older, um, where I just then it became like, oh my gosh, I can't believe storytelling of any form. Forget about comics, but that it is in comics. Uh, Watchmen and uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Like, you know, both, I think I've read them like almost back to back and because they, like only, they only were separate by like a year or so, right? Uh, yeah, and Watchmen took a while. I mean, I think they overlapped a little yeah. bit as well. So, I mean, it all blurs for me. Like now it's all 
you know, oh, it all happened in a month. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> that was a long time ago, kids. Uh, it, it, before the Omega event. Uh, so, but it was kind of that for comics. You're, you know, you're right. It's, it's fascinating. So, again, you know, thank you. Uh, Huge Detective is uh, available now. Issue number one. Issue number two should be hitting. I'm trying to do time math. Three weeks. September 18th. Yes. Yeah, September 18th. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the date on my computer, going, I, I can't see. I, you know, okay. So September 18th, uh, five issues from Titan Comics. And if, and if your store is not carrying it, uh, by all means, please tell them you want them to, because this is not a comic book to sleep on. This is, this is a. You know, I, I think it's going to be on many people's top 10 lists and uh, a lot more people, a lot more influential than me. I just happen to be very enthusiastic. So fortuitous. So glad you reached out and uh, that we connected because likewise, I, you know, I finished that book. I'm like, I want to talk to this guy. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been an honor. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any Fanboy Planet video content. And visit fanboyplanet.com for other features, reviews, interviews, previews, and of course, listening to the Fanboy Planet podcast. And remember, use your powers for good.